CataractCoach.com, why is there so much fluidic surge? Let's learn from this anonymous resident from Guatemala. So here's the case. It's a white cataract. You can see tripan blue dye has been stained on that capsule, starting the rexus here. Looking good, not too much intumescent fluid. Okay, got lucky on that one. Let's see the rexus here. Now, it still may be tough to control this rexus. So, good start. Now, oh, it's running out. Let's bring that back in. Want to bring that rexus back in. And, oh, put some more viscoelastic again. So, maybe a little decompression or double rexus technique would have been nice here to avoid this. But that's not even the focus of our video. Our video, what we want to talk about is after this, and that is the amount of fluidic surge you're going to see in this case. So uh, good rescue. Good job there bringing that rexus back in. Let's get this thing done. And this is a case where there's surge. Now, surge happens when, usually in the post-occlusion state. So you take a phaco piece and aspirate it down the port, and as soon as you uh, break that occlusion, there's a surge. So for a fraction of a second, you aspirate more fluid out of the eye than fluids going in the eye. Now, keep in mind, we're operating in a very small space. What's the volume of an anterior chamber? About a quarter of a cc? And maybe it's a little bit more in the posterior chamber or partially empty capsular bag, but you're looking at less than half a cc. So maybe 10 drops of, of water? Maybe 15? So it's a very small volume in which we're operating. And you have to have very careful fluidic balance. The inflow of fluid that's coming in the eye has to match the outflow. If, for a fraction of a second even, the inflow is insufficient and there's a little more outflow, you'll see the surge. And so modern vacuum machines, we've limited this to a large degree, but still, if your settings on the machine are inappropriate, you can still have surge. So what I want you to watch is this case, as we as the, this resident does the FACO, you're going to notice there's going to be a lot of surge in here. And you'll see that bounce within the anterior chamber. The iris will snap back and forth. The posterior capsule will come forwards. And you have a much higher risk for capsule breakage. So here comes a big chopper or hook. And then phaco probes in the eye too, rotating the nucleus a little bit. Yeah, with an intumescent lens like this, it should rotate pretty easily. Aspirating out some of that lens cortex. Let's see the technique here. Chopper going around the lens equator. And nice chop, very nice chop. So the chop worked great. But remember, the, this surge is going to happen when we start removing these quadrants. And so the chop's doing, uh, going very well. This resident's doing a fantastic job. Good job on the chop, for sure. And then rotating it again, and again, a few more chops. So, and there it is complete. Now watch this. As the phaco pieces are removed, look at the bounce in the anterior chamber. Look at the iris. Oh, look at the bounce of the capsule, the cortex coming up. That shake or that bounce within the anterior chamber, that surge, fluidic surge. See, as the pieces are occluded on the tip and then they break the occlusion, right after that piece of aspirate, look what happens. You'll get a shallowing of the AC. Posterior capsule comes up. The iris comes down a little bit. This means your fluidic settings are mismatched. You got to fix that. For some reason, your inflow is not enough and your outflow is too much. So the inflow not enough could be the bottle height or infusion pressure, or maybe there's a kink in your inflow tubing. Look at that surge. For, or there could be too much outflow. It could be leaky incision, which doesn't appear to be the case too much, or it could be your settings are inappropriate. You have a low infusion pressure, low bottle height, but yet you have a huge or high aspiration flow rate of like 60 or 80 cc's a minute. And so watch, this last piece goes down, and again, there'll be a tremendous amount of surge. So as the piece goes down, it's post-occlusion surge. Watch carefully. Look at that bounce in that anterior chamber. This is high risk for, for breaking the posterior capsule. Because that posterior capsule can come forwards just a millimeter or so and hit that phaco tip and there you go. There's a hole in the posterior capsule. So I like the maneuver here. The resident's keeping that chopper in that safe position, especially with this kind of surge. But this is a situation where you've got to revisit your settings. These settings are just not appropriate. You know, the machine, if you look carefully at your tubing, and we've gone over this, by the way, in our FACO Fundamentals 10-part series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, boy, you better go to cataractcoach.com and look that up. So the FACO Fundamentals tells us that if you look at the tubing, the inflow tubing and the outflow tubing that go to your FACO handpiece are different. The inflow has thinner walls, it's more flexible, 
and it's larger bore. The outflow is smaller bore, and the walls are very rigid. You can't even pinch it. It's closed with your fingers. And that's important to prevent any elasticity in the line because if your, your outflow line has that elasticity, then you get sur surge also. So case is going to be finished up pretty nicely here, but I wanted to show you a good example of excessive fluidic surge. So if this happens to you, you've got to ask yourself, why are you having surge? Is there a problem with your infusion? Is the infusion pressure too low? Is the infusion line on your handpiece kinked or bent or twisted? Or did it fall out? That's one. Or ask yourself, is there too much outflow? Are my incisions too leaky? We showed you that case as well just last week. Or is there a problem with my settings? Do I have the aspiration rate set too high, like 60 cc's a minute or more? Whatever it is, you better figure it out. Thanks for watching.